morning, everybody. I'm so grateful to be here with you all today at Creative Mornings. I wanted to give a special thanks to Herbie for facilitating this, the Omaha Chamber, all the sponsors, and to the Omaha Henry Dorley Zoo and Aquarium for, for hosting us this morning. Today's topic is preserve. And so let's start with that. Uh, in the dictionary, we can see that preserve is to keep in its original state, keep safe from harm, protect, spare, and the opposite is destruction, abandon, and danger, and harm. So to me, preserve is the conservation of wildlife, ecosystems, and human cultures. So to get started, I'd like to share with you one of my favorite quotes from the book Cathedral of the Wild by Boyd, Bar Boyd Barty. Know your truth, stick to the process, and be free of the outcomes. So I'm gonna ask everyone to just take a moment, close your eyes, and just listen. Know your truth, stick to the process, be free of the outcomes. Okay, wake up, mifuhaza. That's my guessy word for wake up. My name is Susie Lewis. Preserve is my truth creativity the process, and I just keep moving forward. Today I hope to share with you my own journey with conservation fusion and how creativity fueled my passion to follow in the direction of my dreams. So let's begin where a great deal of my work takes place on the island of Madagascar. It's the world's fourth largest island and a biodiversity hotspot known for its extreme endemism, which just means about 80% of all the plants and animals found on the island are found nowhere else on the planet. For example, if we th think about the United States, we have 50 states in our United States and really a, about 80 different species of frogs. Well, Madagascar, about the size of one of our states, the size of California, has more than 800 species of frogs. That's a hundred times more. The island is also very famous for its lemurs, a diverse group of 112 different species of primates also found nowhere else on the planet. And I'd just like to mention, since we're here at the zoo, the Omaha Zoo's Conservation Genetics Department in the Center for Conservation Research has named 24 of those species um, new to science. So um, lemurs come in all different sizes, uh, from the smallest, which is the microcebus or the mouse lemur, about the size of this clicker with a tail, um, all the way up to the injury, which is, is like an athletic panda, it's been described as, and it's about the size of a kindergartner. So lemurs come in all shapes and sizes. Now let this sink in, 91% of all lemurs are threatened with extinction, 91%, making them the most threatened group of mammals on the planet, 91%. Madagascar is also home to more than 28 million people with an average income of less than $2 a day. These people are living in extreme poverty and they also lack basic education, um, with just 40% of students staying in school past the fifth grade. Now, due to this extreme poverty, and because 95% of the folks in Madagascar are called subsistence farmers, meaning they're barely gro growing enough food to feed themselves, and they practice a type of agriculture called slash and burn, or tavi, um, and they're clearing the land to plant rice, and that's part of, of their culture, something that we have to also preserve. Um, as I mentioned, due to this extreme poverty, and, and dependence upon the forest for food, water, shelter, and medicines, less than 10% of the original forest remain. Less than 10%. So all those frogs, all those 28 million people, all those 100 species, uh, 112 species of lemurs are living in that, are, are depending upon that less than 10% that, that, that is left. So for me, there was just this spark inside me and it became so crystal clear that saving endangered species is all about people. It's about community-based education. And nobody was doing it. I knew this was my truth. As people are undeniably a part of the problem and conservation challenges, they must also be an integral part of the solution. So in 2010, we launched Conservation Fusion. We're an international NGO with a mission of educating to build and strengthen our world. Everything we do is conservation, education, and collaboration. 
win-win partnerships. So on that note, I want to acknowledge one of our largest partnerships. Um, this is my husband, Dr. Ed Lewis. He's the Director of Conservation Genetics here at the Center for Conservation and Research. And um, his team from the Conservation Genetics, they're here, so let's, let's give them a shout out. Um, the team here in Omaha and a team in, in Madagascar, uh, has they, the, the Zoo Project has developed a Malagasy NGO called the Madagascar Biodiversity Partnership, which I'll just refer to as the MVP. They've been doing award-winning research in Madagascar for more than 20 years, and we um, at Conservation Fusion really focus on the education component. So we currently work at at three sites in Madagascar, each harboring critically endangered lemurs or tortoises. And I'm just gonna talk about two of those today. Preserve is my truth, creativity the process, and I just keep moving forward. In 2010, we hit the ground running. Our initial site was the eastern rainforest of Kinjavatu because of this cute lemur, the greater bamboo lemur, or pro lemur simus. It was once thought to be completely extinct in the wild, Rediscovered in the early 70s, and Dr. Lewis identified a small group in Kinjavatu in 2001. So through education, conservation fusion is connecting students and communities with the biodiversity in their own backyard. Art projects like lemur puppets educate about the nine species found in their surrounding forests. We created mascot costumes when we first started for each of the schools. Here's the chameleon, the black and white rough lemur, the luna moth. And these mascot costumes create a sense of pride for local wildlife for these children. We host conservation camps, bringing children um, to explore the nature in their own backyard and learn the tangible benefits of conservation. We're connecting communities to the science of conservation and the research being done by the MVP. For example, um, the eye eye, which is a rare and elusive lemur, uh, was once hunted as a bad omen, and now it is the mascot and pride and joy of Mbuti Benari Primary School. The students understand its role in keeping the forest they depend upon healthy. We host movie nights where hundreds to engage hundreds of people. Um, we got creative and just threw a sheet up on the side of a school and project the four-part BBC series of Madagascar and also photos of our education programs featuring local people as conservation heroes. We're incorporating STEM with Omaha youth studying fossils who created a time machine for their peers a world away in Madagascar to learn about ancient and extinct lemurs. We're connecting cultures through a series of 30 plus original English Malagasy storybooks and our annual Oramas, which are themed long, month long education programs that culminate with this three mile parade and presentations by each school to share what they've learned and also to help us evaluate our impact. Our programs are holistic. We're teaching One Health with school gardens and healthy compost. Following games, hands-on compost making, and songs, we find the more creative we can be, the more the lessons resonated and filled the hearts and minds of the students and communities that we work with. For example, worms are important. So we talked about the importance of worms and then had an Oreo compost party where the students eat the worms. Um, that certainly is a lesson those kids are never gonna forget. Our education programs use creativity to foster a bond between people and nature and then show them how it impacts their daily lives. The black and white rough lemur in Madagascar um, eats 95% of its diet as fruit and it poops out those seeds. We're always incorporating the science of conservation into our education programs. Lemurs are the foundation of the zoo's reforestation program and major seed dispersers in the forest. We talk about the lemur poop cycle in the classroom. And without these lemurs, they also lack the medicines, lumber, um, water, and fuel wood that they depend upon from the forest. Over time, more than 241,000 trees have been planted by over 5,000 students in our conservation fusion programs. We're creating ownership, as children are not going to want to burn down the forest that they've helped create. And I, I should mention these seedlings um, come from those seeds uh, the, uh, from the lemur poop. 
we see a, a positive impact. And here is a little girl, named, her name's Vula Narina. Here she is in 2011 um, with her, her lemur poop tree. It's called the Vupaka, and it's one of the, the seedlings that comes. Here she is again with her brother in 2014. You can see how big that tree has grown in that short amount of time. And here she is again in 2018 in high school, beating those odds of 60% dropouts after the fifth grade. We see in the eastern rainforest of Kinjavatu that po lemur populations are thriving. In 2019, the black and white rough lemur had just nine individuals, and today there are more than 50. The greater bamboo lemur, once thought to be extinct in the wild, today Kinjavatu is the largest population in all of Madagascar, with more than 150 individuals in multiple family groups. And our partners at the MVP are monitoring that rare and elusive II. It's never been done before, and they're super overachievers. Instead of monitoring just one, they're monitoring eight at the site, and they have had multiple births. Part of the process for me is teamwork. Everything we do is a collaboration, a true partnership. But it's not always easy. So let me tell you this story. Together with our partners at the MVP, the Omaha Zoo, and many others, more than 2.6 million trees have been planted. So, woo, that's great, right? Yes, of course it is. People are showing up by the hundreds to engage in our education programs and understand the importance behind forest restoration. But one day in late November of 2016, a local man was fighting with his ex-wife. He was so mad at her, he started her house on fire in the middle of a drought. The fire raged on throughout the night and into the morning, destroying more than 300 hectares of land, including a portion of the reforestation corridor. We all have setbacks, questioning whether our passion and tireless work is just a drop in the bucket. But we must know our truth, stick to the process, and be free of the outcomes. Preserve is my truth. This is what happened as a result. The very opposite of preserve, destruction but it also started a reaction. People were angry. Many spent hours and risked their lives battling the flames into the night. The MVP team members dug, dug trenches to contain the flames and protect the tree seedlings that had been recently planted, a testament to their ownership and pride in the reforestation program. The fire caused the community to call on government and local police to reinforce laws against Tavi, and the man was jailed for his crime. And when we began our annual planting events with the school children from 12 schools that following February, the children were assigned to plant in the area destroyed by the fire. We know that these charred areas are prime um, places to, to plant the, and optimal for the seedlings. When they came upon that charred hillside, those children were sad and they were angry that their sweat equity and investment in their future had been destroyed. They were furious that the man was already out of jail and they vowed to fight for stricter laws and more accountability. Know your truth, stick to the process, and be free of the outcomes. So let's venture from the Eastern Rainforest of Kinjavatu, another four days journey um, past these incredible baobabs on a ferry across the Mozambique Channel um, until we reach the dry, spiny forest and the remote village of Lavavulu. This is a really very special area in Madagascar. Um, sometimes they don't receive rain in Lavavulu for up to five years. So these people are living in extreme poverty, extreme drought, but they're extraordinary people with a very unique culture. A culture that lends to the protection of the critically endangered radiated tortoises. Lavavulu is for sure the last stronghold for these tortoises in the wild. Right now, these icons of the South are on the brink of extinction, being harvested by outside tribes due to the breakdown of the culture that once protected them and also the illegal pet trade. But we stuck to the process. Conservation is about local people, and education is the key. We forged on with tortoise festivals and also new partnerships that connected students and communities to that biodiversity in their own backyard, knowing that this would promote knowledge, compassion, and action for conservation. When I first arrived in Lavavulu in 2011, 
I met this young lady, Andrea. She was a smart and spunky and super sassy little girl, um, but she, she had no, no way to um, really promote her education. She didn't, they didn't have a school, and she had to walk 20 kilometers to get to the closest school. I also met this man, he's the Nauda or village elder, and he shared with me that he all, always believed that he, him and the other people in, in the village of Wababulu had something to offer their country of Madagascar. However, they never had the opportunity to do so because they couldn't simply read and write. And it was their dream that their children and grandchildren would have a school to go to. They dreamed of a school, the dream school. So we said, okay, we don't know how we're gonna do it, but we're gonna do it. So we teamed up with an NGO called Hug It Forward, who's building um, these, these schools out of trash in South America I, with these eco bricks. The, the bottles are filled up with trash and become these eco bricks. It's a genius idea. Um, however, nope. Uh, Lava Vulu is so remote, so primitive, and so simplistic, they don't even have enough plastic bottles or enough trash to fill the eco bricks. But preserve is my truth creativity the process, and I just keep moving forward. We continued to keep our promises, coming back to the village, continuing our education programs. We got creative, and service learning volunteers right here in the U.S. created uniforms in the likeness of the radiated tortoises. We shared these small steps with the village of Lavavulu and the Nauda. We continued to connect cultures through after-school programs, connecting kids here in the U.S. with our, our students in Lavavulu. We hosted conservation camps, again, connecting them with the, the science of conservation. And in 2014, the dream school became a reality. This is our building permit tied uh, on a, a piece of cardboard tied onto a cactus. The entire village helped us to paint the school in rainbow colors and insisted upon painting a huge mural of the radiated tortoise on the side of the school. We had 70 students and one trained teacher, creating a foundation for conservation and education in the region. Now, because of the Dream School, several of our students alerted the local gendarmes. You can see here how the poachers have turned these tortoises on their backs and after harvesting them from the forest. These Dream School kids helped rescue more than 600 radiated tortoises from poachers a testament that education in the region led to conservation action. And this past August, seven students qualified for and passed the national exam in Madagascar for the first time ever. Since then, we've built a teacher's house, school lunch program, community gardens, a library, and launched an eco club. Conservation is about more than just saving endangered species. It's about people. We approach the human dimensions of conservation from a holistic view, and we listen to meet basic needs first. In 2015, we launched the Girls With No Shoes Club, an opportunity to empower girls, to give them a voice and a choice and a hope for the future. And in 2018, we launched our scholarship program for these girls to attend high school. If you build it, they will come, and they did. Today we have 175 students coming from neighboring villages and seven trained teachers. The villagers this past summer came to us with plans for a new school. And today we're finding creative ways to make Dream School 2.0 a reality for them this summer to accommodate this expansion. Preserve is my truth. Creativity the process and I just keep moving forward. Now remember those 2.6 million trees they came in 2.6 million plastic bags that are ripped open when they're planted so as not to disturb the roots. So what do we do with them? Well, we got creative. Our failure at the Dream School was a solution in the eastern rainforest of Kinjavatu. The Eco Bricks provided jobs for local women, a safe way to dispose of the plastic bags, and an investment from the local community as these bricks became the insulation of the MBP Research Center buildings and nursery projects in the region. And remember that angry husband and the fire? That fire raised awareness, a passion for conservation, and drove stricter law enforcement, resulting in an active gendarme forest patrol. Recently, in 2017, three more men were caught about to start a fire. 
The first was sent directly to jail because he tried to attack the forest police with a machete. The second one was sent to Malagasy court and, and sent to jail time to be accountable for his crime. And the third man was once a boy in our conservation fusion classes. He told the judge he was visiting his father, the second man, trying to convince him to not start the fire. He was adamant, telling the judge, I would never do that. I'm one of Susie's kids. I know the forest brings us clean air, water, and is home to the lemurs. He recited all local nine lemur species and talked about the lemur cycle and how the rough lemurs spread the seeds of the forest and are at the heart of the reforestation efforts. The Malagasy judge, in tears, let the boy go. So I tell myself, preserve is my truth, creativity the process, and I just keep moving forward. Part of the dream school was the installation of this hand washing station, complete with mirrors. So take a look at this. This is the first time that these kids have ever seen themselves. So now I'd like to take this moment for all, all of us to just look inward and reflect upon ourselves. So just close your eyes once again. Think about your own truth. What drives you? What sets your fire? What is your process to learn, grow, transform, and create opportunities to influence others? And once you own that, you can be free of the outcomes. OK, open your eyes. We can all do our part to preserve the conservation of wildlife, ecosystems, and human cultures. We can all reduce, reuse, and recycle. We can create partnerships and take small steps on a daily basis that will ensure we have a brighter future for people, animals, and our planet. I'm Susie Lewis. Preserve is my truth, creativity the process, and no matter the challenges, obstacles, and failures, I just keep moving forward. Thank you so much for your time today.